بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس إلا إبليس قال أأسجد لمن خلقت طينا قال أرأيتك هذا الذي كرمت علي لئن أخرتني إلى يوم القيامة لأحتنكن لأحتنكن ذريته إلا قليلا قال اذهب فمن تبعك منهم فإن جهنم جزاؤكم جزاء موفورا واستفزز من استطعت منهم بصوتك وأجلب عليهم بخيلك ورجلك وشاركهم وشاركهم في الأموال والأولاد وعدهم وما يعدهم الشيطان إلا غرورا إن عبادي ليس لك عليهم سلطان وكفى بربك وكيلا ربكم الذي يزجي لكم الفلك في البحر لتبتغوا من فضله إنه كان بكم رحيما وإذا مسكم الضر في البحر ضل من تدعون إلا إياه فلما نجاكم إلى البر أعرضتم وكان الإنسان كفورا أفأمنتم أن يخصف بكم جانب البر أو يرسل عليكم حاصبا ثم لا تجدوا ثم لا تجدوا لكم وكيلا أم أمنتم أن يعيدكم فيه تارة أخرى فيرسل عليكم فيرسل عليكم قاصفا من الريح فيغرقكم بما كفرتم ثم لا تجدوا ثم لا تجدوا لكم علينا به تبيعا ولقد كرمنا بني آدم وحملناهم في البر والبحر ورزقناهم ورزقناهم من الطيبات وفضلناهم على كثير ممن خلقنا تفضيلا يوم ندعو كل أناس بإمامهم فمن أوتي كتابه بيمينه فأولئك يقرؤون كتابهم ولا يظلمون فتيلا ومن كان في هذه أعمى فهو في الآخرة أعمى وأضل سبيلا وإن كادوا ليفتنونك عن الذي أوحينا إليك لتفتري علينا غيره وإذا لاتخذوك خليلا ولولا أن ثبتناك لقد كدت تركن إليهم شيئا قليلا إذا لأذقناك ضعف الحياة وضعف الممات ثم لا تجد لك علينا نصيرا وإن كادوا ليستفزونك من الأرض ليخرجوك منها وإذا لا يلبثون خلافا إلا قليلا سنة من قد أرسلنا قبلك من رسلنا ولا تجد لسنتنا تحويلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم رمضان مبارك my name is Ibrahim Musa. I'm speaking to you today from the University of Notre Dame in the state of Indiana, United States. May Allah's peace and blessings be with you and every blessing for the month of Ramadan. My conversation to you, my nasiha to you, will be a few thoughts about the way in we can talk about the idea of dignity in the time of the pandemic. This pandemic that the entire world is experiencing might teach us something about something very fundamental and foundational about ourselves. We as human beings have something that is called dignity. 
dignity means that we have self-regard, that we have a sense of what we are worth, and that we feel certain things when they happen to us. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ That we have indeed bestowed dignity on the children of Adam. وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And we have also carried these human beings on the land and on the seas. وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ And we provision for them every kind of good. وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَضْدِيلًا And we preferred the species over much of what we have created with a definite preference for them. The reason why we have a sense of self-regard, we have a sense of dignity, is because it is divinely conferred on us. We refer to a very central element of what we are and who we are as human beings, as personhood. Personhood comes into existence because the Creator had conferred on us <clears throat> the spirit, the ruh. And the ruh has a dimension known as the nafs. <clears throat> and the nafs is that which we is an expression of our being. Not the nafs in the negative sense. The nafs, the nafs can go through various stages of spiritual development, but the nafs per se is what it is we are as human beings. The nafs feels it, the ruh feels it, the nafs and the ruh have a close connection. So that's why we have dignity. And dignity is central to who we are. And all our ethical and moral activities take place on the basis that we respect the dignity of others and we expect others to reciprocate that dignity toward us. It's a very, very important teaching, but often it is neglected because sometimes we boast that we have souls, we have the spirit within us, but we do not always live up to that requirement. And sometimes we think that we made a joke with someone or we did something to someone, but we do not consider that how that might be injurious, the feeling of the human being. And so in the month of Ramadan, we abstain from three things, from food, from drink, and from acts of procreation or the dignity of love. We do not perform these three things during the daylight hours. <clears throat> All three things are vital to what we are and who we are, what we would say to our dignity. If we deprive people of food and drink, that deprivation would be regarded as undermining their dignity if it is done willfully. If we also do not show respect to other people or we don't show regard to them, that is also undignified. But food and drink <clears throat> is crucial to our very survival. And so our dignity is tied up to our very survival. And in the month of Ramadan, we voluntarily abstain from this in, respond, in response to a divine command. We also do not engage in what comes natural to us in the act of affection and companionship that is central to our own 
comfort and sakina, as the Quran calls it, that we find a peace within each other and that we have the hope of procreation, which is also a form in which we earn dignity in the world and we see the growth and flourishing of our species. During this pandemic, millions of people are deprived of food and drink in different parts of the world. Some of us are fortunate that we have savings. We live in societies where we can possibly get through for some time because the most important thing of providing for yourself food and drink is the dignity of work. And this virus has prevented us from making contact with each other and going out to do work because we are in a state of lockdown. And soon we begin to feel if we are not in a position to provide for ourselves and we cannot enjoy the dignity of work, we're going to feel something is going wrong. We don't want to live on handouts. Millions of daily wage earners are deprived of their work, of their income, and hence cannot provide for themselves. And so this is an extremely difficult time. And therefore we need to pay attention in ways in which we can assist others and ensure that human dignity is not undermined and we can do our best in order to prevent people from suffering because suffering is also another form or suffering can turn into an undignified act. So in this month of Ramadan, this voluntary suspension of these three acts make us realize some very fundamental elements of who we are and what the nature of our being is. And therefore, we should be among those who are in the forefront to make it better for those who are facing all kinds of deprivations that affect their human person, their being, and their dignity. In the verse of the Quran that I talked about, I mentioned, Allah makes it clear that it is Allah who allows us to travel over the land and the sea. And there is an element of mobility. That the idea of being conferred, Allah confers on us dignity. But this dignity allows us, it manifests itself in our, in our ability to be mobile, to travel the world, to earn a livelihood, to communicate with each other, to travel over land, to make culture, civilization possible. That is the central element of this virtue of dignity or this element or this great gift of dignity rather. That this gift of dignity, one of it is mobility. And this disease and this pandemic immobilizes us. It asks us that do not travel, do not move around, do not make contact. And that is a difficult thing. And so we need to think very carefully what are the best ways that we can become mobile again without endangering ourselves and others. And here we need to follow health authorities in different countries and places who have worked out a variety of, of procedures and methods to ensure that we do not endanger ourselves and others. This idea of, of dignity is something that very few people have spoke about as eloquently as Sheikh Muhammad Abdullah Daraz. He was a great scholar uh, from Egypt and he wrote extensively on this topic in many of his works on ethics, and he died in, was born in 1894, died in 1958. 
he argued that central to the maqasid of Sharia is the idea of human dignity. And the maqasid of the Sharia really is in many ways the embodiment of human dignity. Because he says, human dignity provides first of all, sanctity and protection. Hurma of the human person and protection. Secondly, it underscores honor and the sovereignty of the self. And thirdly, it provides for certain ways that we understand that we are entitled and we enjoy merit. And that's what the question of human dignity does for us. Allal al-Fasi, a great Moroccan scholar and politician who died in 1974, argued that dignity is the right of every person where that person is righteous or sinful. And Allal al-Fasi understood that human development and human advancement is central to human dignity. And therefore, he spoke very eloquently about that we need to engage in the sanctified struggle for human dignity, what he called Jihad al-Karama. And so, I believe, in my humble opinion, that we could find ways to assist each other even now in the state of lockdown or under restricted movement to make it possible that many of us who are deprived of dignified forms of existence can enjoy that again in the ways that it is possible. We also need to think about those people who've put their dignity and their lives and their bodies at the forefront of this battle to combat this disease. And those are the first responders, your uh, ambulance people, your fire, firemen and women, your health workers, a variety of them doctors, nurses, physicians, their support staff who make the, you know, the hospitals function and make them effective. Those are the people who understand the dignity of others and trying to help others also put themselves at risk. At this moment, we think and we pray for their safety, for the safety of their families, because the nature of this disease is extremely contagious. <clears throat> and therefore, we will try our best during this time to think about the small, small ways in which human dignity is impacted during this time of the pandemic and how we can make the situation better for ourselves and our fellow human beings. I pray that Allah makes it possible for us to fulfill the objectives of the month of Ramadan, albeit under very limited conditions and that we can still find fellowship through the medium of the technologies available to us. We can talk to each other, we can share, and we can also keep our world out there functioning and revitalize it and learn some lessons because ultimately what this pandemic teaches us is it insists that we look deep into ourselves and we begin to recognize our vulnerabilities and we recognize our absolute dependence on nature, that we cannot actually combat nature, but we need to adjust to the demands of nature. And we will find a way to adjust. And maybe it will be through ways of gaining Im immunity to this um, very uh, dangerous disease, or there'll be other ways. But to find the remedy, to find the solutions. These are also the ways in which we restore and procure our dignity. I pray that the month of Ramadan will be a month of blessings for you, 
and that we will achieve our objectives and hopefully come through this battle um, with this disease. And we pray for the lives lost, but we will also be uh, much more enhanced in understanding who we are and a better sense of our dignity during this time of pandemic. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.